So this week in the workshop, we have this beautiful Mark 1 Golf GTI Cabriolet. Seems to have a habit of working on these currently, but that's all fun. So throttle body upgrade. We're going to be upgrading the stock Mark 1 Golf GTI throttle body for a larger Mark 2 Golf GTI. You can put the Audi 2.2 ones on there, Audi 80s, etc, etc. Et the Mark 2 16 valve and 8 valve are the same fitment and a larger main butterfly, which is what we want really. So we just measure the smaller sort of part throttle um, butterfly. Both of them are 34.7, 34.8, can't remember the exact size. Yeah, so 34.8. Yeah, 34.8. So that's not the one we really want to focus on. The what one we want to focus on is this one, bottom one. So the bottom one on the Mark 1 is 43.8. So take that as a 44. And this one is 16 valve member. So you're looking at 51, so 52 mil. So 52 mil. That's a near enough makes no difference. 20% increase. And that's a huge amount. And what we need to do now is make sure it fits in the inlet manifold. So this is a section of a 16 valve throttle body. And I will just put it up against the Mark 1 and see what difference we have. And as you can see, a slight bit of work we need to do to make this fit in the inlet manifold. So let's have a look what we need to do. So this is the inlet manifold. So this is where it's going to fit on. And as you can see, we've got a huge amount on the right hand side and two big lips on the main butterfly. So what we need to do is mark the areas that need removing. So there we go. That's what we need to get rid of top and bottom and that big chunk on that side. So that means the throttle body will actually open and not wedge itself closed. So again, the side by side, we've got the Mark 1 and the Mark 2. Not much difference really. The only issue is throttle linkage, but the Mark 1 has a little ball joint and the Mark 2 doesn't, but we'll address that shortly. So here we go. Throttle body, get that ported out, and we've got the inner manifold off the car, because if you do it on the car, all the swarf that goes in there will go in the engine and go bang. So let's get that grinded out. So as you can see, that is looking much better. We've now got no lips, but we have got is this side here. Now, you can't make this fully flat because the inner manifold is quite shallow in there so if you try and get it flat you'll go straight through the wall and ruin the inner manifold but again that's just part throttle one so it's not a major issue just make it nice and smooth just so the air can flow through again you don't want to be doing that grinding through and putting a hole through it because you'll be swearing lots so what i've used is carbide bits now the one on the left is one for getting rid of the bulk of the material really it's very violent um gets rid of a lot of material quickly and then once that's done you can use a nice uh, christmas tree nothing like a christmas tree but that's what it is um yeah that can get rid of all the finer stuff then after that 80 grit flappy wheel just to smooth it all off and get it looking as good as we can now you don't want it polished because polishing doesn't flow anything shame as sharp angles don't flow anything you want it smooth to the touch that's all you need to do doesn't matter if it doesn't look perfect smooth will do so the plate's off and we've just finished off some edges so there's no sharp lines or sharp jumps so it's nice and smooth. Now remember in this edge what we can't do is get it flat because it will go through the sidewall. Now what you remember, need to remember is sharp edges don't flow. Polished surfaces don't flow. Smooth to the touch is all you need. So we've got that nice smooth. We just rounded it off on there as well because that goes straight into cylinder four. So that'll help it in. Now again, like I said, best to do it off the car because all that shiny stuff and all that shiny stuff will get in your engine and make a mess. So throttle body's on. We've ported out the manifold so the butterflies won't wedge themselves and we have clean flow in. Now, a few bits to do on that in a minute, but we'll come back to that shortly. So what we have is throttle linkage. Now, this linkage is the Mark 1 type. And as you see, this Mark 2 has it on there. It's because I've changed it all around. So what we'll do, you need that at about a one o'clock position to pull that way as the Mark 1 does. Now I'll just grab the Mark 1 original uh, throttle body which is hiding under a sheet. There you go. So you can see, lines up like that. 
ball joint about one o'clock same sort of position on the mark two now now question is where did i get that arm from now i had an audi 80 throttle body lying around you can pick them up for pennies um it was just lying around and it has the right ball joint on it so we've taken that off there now there's not much difference in that really just a lot more gubbins on it which we don't need on this you can use that as no problems but i've used the mark ii because it's got a separate um house on the front so it's a bit shorter but that is what we want the arm off the top so simple 14 mil nut pull it off and it doesn't fit so what you need to do is drill it out drill it out to eight millimeters and then that'll leave a nice circle but what we need to do is have that pattern inside it so once it's drilled out you need to then file out to fit over that top lug so when you do it tight it has no chance of actually moving so it sits perfectly like that so once that's all done full throttle pulled now it's down like the mark one would do boom there we go butterflies are opening so now we just need to dress a few things now happy enough the idle screw is on the same size as the mark one is and the uh, switch on a throttle switch is that side, different side, but there's no problems because the wires still fit. So no worries about that. Now we haven't finished the die grinder just yet because we have a lip on the inside of there. So we made the main inlet manifold to fit to this, which is perfect. And now we just need to, this is like all 16 valve or eight valves throttle bodies with the two sections in here. Um, so what we can do is give it a light bit of port in just to improve the flow across there make that nice and round a bit thinner just to, again just to aid that initial so we've thrown the die grinder all over it and it looks much better again we are going through a finger feel smooth so that is then just smoothed off all the lips around the outside so there's no restriction of air or any steps of air to go through and the center bit is just sort of bladed in a way um looking much better than the factory one as you can see bit small bit grubby and there we go so much more improvement so what i do is just finish off the inside of that with the flappy wheel what i'll do now is use a 120 grit flappy wheel on the die grinder just to make it a bit smoother again that's as good as we need to get it nice and smooth to the touch 120 grit flappy wheel on the die grinder getting it over putting a bit of pressure on it and then as you're getting to a comfortable point just release the pressure on it a bit just to give it a nice nice smooth finish so we just need to clean it all out no lips perfect there we go she's on the car bolted on connectors are on there idle screw as it is throttle linkage is on so we have a nice as factory straight line throttle cable to open both the butterflies perfect what i do like doing stuff like this to anyone, that just looks like a, a Mark McGrath throttle body. And when you look inside, we have this. Ta-da! All finished. So the throttle body is on, and to the untrained eye, that just looks like a Mark McGrath engine bay. But we've got a nicer throttle body on there. So throttle cable is lined up perfectly. All the pipes on. One thing you do need to make sure is the jubi clips on the intake pipe don't foul it on full throttle. So once that's done... You need to then adjust your CO and your idle and your ignition timing to get everything spot on and running sweet. So that's finished. That's our throttle body upgrade complete. Car's road tested. Does it make a difference? Yes. It makes more of a difference getting the car set right. So you can chuck a throttle body on it. It probably will work, but you really need to adjust your CO level because you've got more air going in. So you need to adjust it a little bit. This was off, it's now set just over 2, about 2.3%. Um, I aim sort of just over that on a car. But again, they're all sort of different. Every engine is different. So the CO is set, ignition timing is then set. And again, when you're doing the ignition time, it's best to keep the CO meter still plugged in as well, because you can add or take one degree of ignition timing, um, and that can affect your CO. So I've set the CO where I want it. The ignition timing is set where I'm happy with it car flies along nicely um, we don't really need to add more fuel you think well hold on you just added 20 percent size of a throttle body more air where's the more fuel well looking back to the other videos when you watch the uh meter in the head so at 
for example, 4,500 RPM on any K-Jet system. Steady state run. You've got your air flap is going to be open, set amount, which is going to give the fuel pin movement, set amount, and that's steady state. That flap's not going to be fully up. Even changing it again, you're doing flat out, foot to the floor, wide open throttle, and steady state as you can get wide open throttle. Your air flap's there, the fuel pin's there, it's given its air mixture. Believe it or not, that air flap is not always fully up. So it can be, it will sit about there, and then you've got the flow of air going into the engine. Obviously, if you improve something further down, which you have the throttle body, that allows more air to get in the engine. So more air can get in the engine means the flap can move up because more air can be drawn in. As the flap moves up, the pin moves up. Now, K-Jet system will happily flow support fuel for about 200 brake horsepower. Um, also, you just pretty much proved that on my last video, 188 brake or 188.6. Um, and to be honest, I haven't actually flow matched the meter and head on my car. So could be a few more than that. But anyway, I digress. So throttle body's on. Don't need to check fuel because it will supply what it needs. Um, CO set, like I said, ignition time is set. And yeah, absolutely fantastic upgrade. Nice addition of a bit of a throatier intake when your foot's down. Um, yeah, on and off throttle's perfect. Um, you put your foot down, it's flying along. Again, we're not expecting massive results. It is a 1.8 eight valve engine. Um, yeah, happy with that. So all you need really is take off your Mark 1 throttle body, replace it with a 16 valve or 8 valve, um, same part, um, throttle body. Don't waste your money trying to find one off an Audi 2.2 turbo 5 cylinder because firstly you won't get one. If you do, you're paying about 500 quid for one when a throttle body off a Mark 2 8 valve, I've got about four sat here. They're two a penny. Well, not two a penny, but you know what I mean. Plenty left. Um, yeah, throttle body's all you need. And then what you can do, I know I utilised part of an Audi 80 one, which you can get as well. The Mark 1 throttle linkage, remember, your ball joint one, that can come off. And again, just re drill the hole out So, and then file it so our shaft can sit on there. And then your throttle can connect up. And again, it's just tweaking your idle CO ignition timing. So any questions, stick them in the comments. I'll put the part numbers in the comments if you, if you need it or the description. Um, pretty simple, 8, 16 valve, um, throttle will work. So cheers for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.